Hello dear jewelry channel, welcome to this tutorial. This video is about the almighty 3D jewelry settings asset in Blender. I'm going to show the structure and the content of the almighty asset. First, when you open the asset, you need to know about the toggle filters because they affect what you can see in the viewport. So up here, toggles, restrictions. Maybe you have none selected. You will have no view options or selection options here at the right in the outliner. Most of the time we have the render toggle, the viewport toggle and the active toggle turned on. So now you can show and hide the collections in the viewport and in the render. By default, everything is activated for rendering, which means that if I make a render F12 right now, I'm going to see all the settings overlapping at once in the render because the entire content of the asset is set by default to render. So obviously the result is very funny, but that's not how it works. We need to remove what we don't want from the render. That's why the render toggle is very important. Then also by default, when you open the file, there's only one setting showing. Otherwise, here with the viewport show and hide toggle, everything would be overlapping at once. And also that's not how it works. You need to hide the things that you don't want to be seeing in the viewport. Now inside the asset about the materials and HDR in the asset, let's go to shading. Let's go to world. So here, when we make a render preview, we're going to have a plain blue background. You can change that if you want right here. And we have an image for the environment that's providing pretty nice reflections, pretty simple. The diamonds have a simple diamond material. The gold material is pretty simple, but it's very attractive. It has a scratches image to make some nice little detail on the gold. And for the soft cabochon gemstones, we have colored crystal material, five, simple but pretty colored materials the violet the red the green the fire orange material and the simple blue material so you can select whatever color you want and if you want another color just make a copy of the material come here and change the color to whatever you like then also in the asset we have a simple camera angle isometric camera angle, a point light and a floor with a specific material. Here you can change the color of the floor or hide the floor and get the plain RGB background from the environment. Now, something very important, instead of working directly inside the asset file, you are going to append the settings that you like and need to your jewelry project files in Blender. It means that you will be working in other files. You only need to open the asset to check the shapes and settings that you are going to need to know what collection to append into your other jewelry project in Blender to be working with these specific settings and customize them to the size and shapes that you need in your jewelry design instead of opening and working inside the asset file. So as the creator and user of the almighty asset, I warmly recommend you to open the asset only to learn, only to check the shapes that you're going to need and then open a new file and append the settings that you will be using and modifying. So if you want to append, just go to file append. Here I'm in a new file. Go locate your setting asset here. Collections, object, materials, the world settings. I'm going to append a collection. I want the peer bezels. I'm going to get the five variants of the cabochon settings. They're all in the same collection. I can start hiding what I don't need. If the gemstone is not here, simply go to file, append, go to objects, and I'm going to find by name, it's the gemstone, it's the peer faceted here. And now I have the gemstone appended in my new file here in Blender. So you can append whatever 
suits you best. Now, for each gemstone cut, we have the cabochon settings for the soft cabochon with or without the mille grain. You can show and hide the mille grain right here. We have the simple bezel and we have a double bezel for more decorated settings. Then we have the faceted variants. It means that they are adapted to the faceted cut of the gemstone. We have the basket, the double prongs basket, the straight basket, and five bezel variants for the faceted gemstone. Here also, you can show and hide the mille grain depending the type of bezel. You're going to use the thicker or double mille grain or the simple mille grain depending the size of the bezel that you're using. Then we have the halo variants, the tight row and the wider plate that has a bigger border for a wider halo around the central gemstone. You need to know that the halos are adapted by default to the basket setting of that specific gemstone shape. So now for all the different gemstone shapes and cuts, the structure is very similar. The cushion starts with the cabochon, soft variants, two variants, simple and double, with or without the mille grain, then the faceted variants, the baskets, all the bezel shapes with or without the mille grain, the double prongs, and the straight prongs. You can have a white corner or a simple variant. Also, the gemstone is always here somewhere in the collection. If you need, you might hide it for exporting to STL. You might show it for the render. Then we have the halo variants to that specific shape, the cushion, then the emerald soft cabochon with the two variants, with or without the mille grain, the faceted variants with the default basket, the five bezel variants, the double prongs, the straight basket with different types and shapes of prongs, and then the halo or the default basket, white plate and tight row halos. Then the heart shape, cabochon bezel, the soft bezels, two variants with the mille grain, then all the settings for the faceted heart shape. The basket has variants, the double prongs. You can change the tip for double or V-shaped prong, the straight baskets, and obviously all the bezels for the faceted gem and the halo variants for the heart-shaped basket. The only exception to this structure are the baguettes settings. Here we have the tapper baguettes with all different prongs and shapes for the baskets and the prongs for the tapper baguettes and the rectangular baguettes. So it's an obvious exception because the baguettes are a peculiar type of settings for jewelry design. Then we have the Marquise Cabochon settings, soft versions. Then we have all the faceted baskets for the Marquise with all the bezels, the five variants, the straight basket with different type of prongs and the halos for the normal basket, white plate and tight row. Then we have the oval settings, the soft cabochon variants, then all the oval faceted variants with the basket, the bezels. Then here we have the peg head. The peg head is a very classic setting for round and oval gemstones, the straight basket here, and the V style or Tiffany style for the oval gemstone. Here for the normal basket, we have the white plate halo and the tight row halo. Then the pier shaped gemstones, the cabochon soft variants, then all the faceted baskets for the pier shape, all the bezels for the faceted pier shaped gemstones, the basket with different shapes of prongs, the straight basket also with variants, and for the normal basket, the halos, the white plate and the tight row variants. Now for the round gemstones, for the cabochon gemstones, the soft variants, then all the round baskets and bezels for the faceted round gemstones, the basket, the straight basket, the peg head, four and six prongs, the bezels with or without the mille grain, and the V-style, Tiffany-style, six prongs or four prongs 
for the round gemstones and then for the default basket we have the halos the white plate and the tight rope then we have the square or princess cut shapes the cabochon the soft cabochon with the variants the two variants then we have all the faceted baskets and bezels for the princess square shaped gemstone so the bezels with or without the mille grains. we have the baskets with different shapes of prongs and the straight basket and for the default basket we have the square halos the tight row and the white play for the square princess cut gemstones and last but not least the trillion cabochon settings the two soft variants then all the bezels for the faceted trillion with the five variants with or without the milgrain the basket settings also with different shapes for the prongs the straight basket and obviously for the default basket you have the trillion halos the tight row and the white plate as for all the other shapes great so this was the quick overview of the structure and content of the almighty 3d jewelry settings asset in blender we have learned the default and general advices on how to use the asset appending the different elements or using the asset browser a quick introduction on what's inside the asset for the different gemstones shapes and cuts then for each gemstone shape there is a specific tutorial on how to work and customize each setting for each specific gemstone shape take care have a nice day and see you soon